Hi guys, welcome back to the podcast. This is Paint the Town Dead. I am one half of your host, Caitlin. And... Yes, I am here too. Okay, there you are. I'm Andrew, by the way. Oh, hello. I'm the better half, some might say. Deba- some might debate that, I don't know. I debate this. That's because you are um, arrogant and cocky and... Am I? Uh, that's what I've known you for. No, you haven't. Shut that's up. That's what you're mostly known for. <laughs> Shut up. That's what you put in like your Facebook about me. You're yeah. like, the when thing pe- about me. People are like, so tell me about yourself. Well, I'm arrogant and I'm cocky. Well, guess what? I'm the best at everything. Pick a thing. I'm the best at it. Good audio there. Goodbye, Caitlin. Sorry. Moving her microphone around. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We are, uh, we are currently, as we speak... Well, I'm trying to fix my oh down. I'm so sorry. My microphone. I'm sorry. I thought I was going to kick back and hold it, but I changed my mind. I want to use my hands. Um, we are currently finishing the um, sugar-free jello shots that I made for New Year's. So, cheers. Hooray. Um, yeah. New Year's. It's off to a good start, I guess. Not really. It could be worse. We'll we'll move on from that before. Yeah, don't don't steer <laughs> steer away steer away. Yeah, you know it'd be nice to just have like uh, leadership that's good. But anyway, <laughs> that's, run run that's, run away. Uh, that's the whole other thing. Um, so I don't know. Have you been up to anything with the new year? No. Oh, okay. Uh, oh. here's what, here's what I did with the new year. When was the new year? What day of the week was that? That was, uh, New like Year's Friday? Eve, I believe was a Thursday. Yeah. So that was one day. Okay. Thursday. This is what I did. Are you ready? Yeah. Nothing. Excellent. Thursday night, you came over and, and the three of us really didn't party, but we played. I won Rummy Cube and Caitlin got mad about it. I did not. And she was like, oh, I'm done playing this game It now was also like 11 Andrew o'clock won. at night and it was way past my bedtime. I, I won and Caitlin's a sore loser. This is a history going back a decade no, where Caitlin not. is a sore loser because I whipped her butt at the gu- Guitar Hero multiplayer and she got very upset with me. I don't remember that. I think you make things. You, I think sometimes you believe what you want to believe. You had a post that you sent to me very recently that was like an anniversary of like, it was like on this day, however many years ago, and it was a post of you saying, Andrew is a bad game buddy. It was in reference to when I whipped your butt how at Guitar you, Hero. How do you know that? It just stands. It's a memory that stands out for me. How do you know? Because you were so you angry about it. You are literally making this up right now on the spot. I know you wish that were true. I, w- I know you wish you we lived in a fantasy where that was true, but... <laughs> Some would argue... The reality right. is I whipped your butt at Guitar Hero and you were very unhappy about it. I don't remember this. Yeah, I bet. Some people, you know, they repress traumatizing memories. It's, uh, it's just a thing they do, I guess, because of psychology. Uh, well, okay. So we played, we actually played, we played like three or four different games. I was getting, as you can tell, we only played one round of each of those games. So, yeah. And then we, and we stayed up like to like midnight 30. Quick, promptly, we all went to bed. Something like that. And then I slept a lot the past few days. It's been amazing. Yeah, sleeping's pretty good. Got a new game, cleaned. What game? Valhalla. Oh, you got the... Assassin's Creed. Okay. Valhalla. Um, so, you want to get into it? Okay, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, I will be doing today's today's case, today's story. Um, it's not a long one at all. It's, in fact, a very short one. Just like Caitlin is short. Got her. We got her, guys. We did it. We did it, Finally. I'm so proud of you. We did it. Okay. Everybody clap right now on on the podcast, no matter where you are. Oh, wait. No. You, okay. I was talking to the people at oh, home. Oh, okay, okay. Or on the go, wherever no, they are. I'm not clapping. Clap. Clapping. Just clap. Don't tell anybody why. Just start doing it. Because we got her, guys. We did it. Shut up. Okay. Um. Today, Andrew, it's a short case. It's a short story. Um. Episode 44. We're on our 44th episode. Isn't that wild? It is. I, we're not 
not too far off from it being a full year. Yeah, that's coming up really quickly, which, anyways, I'll, I'll talk about some of that stuff later. Um, okay, episode 44, Andrew, is about Patricia, or Patty, as she was known, Gordado. And I don't know if you've, have you heard of this case? Uh, Patty Gordado? Not off the top of my head. Uh, has it been on the list? Yes. Then I've read the name. Yes, you have. It's been on there for quite some time. Um, it's mixed in there with Amanda Tussing and Dana Stidham. Because uh, sometimes you hear these cases talked about together, but I'm not really sure why. Um, Just women. Young being women. Murdered and, and stuff. And, and anyway, we'll, we'll talk about it in a second. Okay. So Patricia or Patty Gordado. Patty, as she was known to pretty much everybody. She is the daughter of Lenore Garcia and Martin Gordado. Uh, she was a 20-year-old college student at the University of Arkansas Little Rock, which is UALR, which is Euler, which is... <laughs> you know, I'm just it's, trying to stop. It's located in the one true city of Arkansas. One true city. I want to give a shout out to Euler for um, being a real crap part of town, Little Rock, which is a real bummer. I remember... Yep. I, I saw, uh, it was like a map of the most dangerous parts of Arkansas in like the top nine, or not Arkansas, Little Rock specifically, and like the top nine or eight were all like at or near UALR. Well, that's gonna, well, that's interesting that you say that, actually. Uh, we're gonna be talking about that. Yeah, it's a pretty rough part of town. Yes. My favorite thing is, uh, I saw like a promotional thing from UALR that uh-huh. was like, Located in the heart of Midtown Little Rock, I was like, "No, you are not." It's all about that, a, it's all about advertising. That is a lie. <laughs> the heart of Midtown Little Rock is on the other side of the freeway, well away from you. <laughs> you don't count, you exactly. Uh, nice basketball arena, though. Yeah, and their mascot is the Trojans. That's right. And they used to have football a long time ago. Yeah, like up until the fifties or something. Now they don't. They were. G- tell me your history. I was actually pretty interested. Tell me your history. Oh, uh, it was just me spouting off facts about Euler that I sort of remember, tell or at me. least think I remember. Tell me. <laughs> Where it started off as Little Rock Junior College back in like the twenties, I believe, nineteen twenties. Uh huh. Uh, at some point, it became a private school, renamed mm-hmm. itself as Little Rock University. They ran out of money. And the University of Arkansas system came in and was like, hey, you can join us and we have money. There you go. And that's how the University of Arkansas at Little Rock was born officially, which it is kind of surprising that like the capital of Arkansas, like they're, they're. It's not that surprising if you consider other similarly sized southern cities, because like Birmingham doesn't have the major, the major university in Alabama. That's true. That's true. And, and the same goes for Mississippi and like Jackson. That's true. So, yeah. You know. Okay. You, okay. Um, anyway, so Patty was here in 2011 studying. She was part of a really close knit family. They were always talking to each other all the time. They spoke often and there was just a lot of love in that family. She grew up with four other siblings um, she had kind of like a select group of friends and kind of stayed to herself mostly, uh, but she was very well liked and she didn't have any enemies or anything like that. So I was going to say same, very small group of friends and I stayed to myself, but then you said well liked, not me. <laughs> Can't and, relate. And you lost me. Two thirds, that's a 66%. That's failing. Yeah, but in baseball, that'd be astronomical. Really? Uh, yeah, 300, aka 30% batting, that's like, hey, you're going to the Hall of Fame, baby. That doesn't seem very good. Baseball is an incredibly frustrating sport. You're correct. No kidding. Ew. Who would like sports? Um, okay, so she was all like, she was studying international business, which I think is interesting. Uh, and Lenore said of her daughter, she wanted to graduate early. She just had a lot of dreams. Um, so on October... 11th or 12th i'm i read a, like a bunch of different news articles and it was like kind of split half and half which it is but i think it's probably the 12th um just because of the way some of the days are laying out for some of our, our it, events it's interesting you mentioned that because that's been something i've run into quite a bit with a lot of articles I mean, you think like it, it's like i mean i guess if i went back and looked at like news records i mean not news records court records and police records and things like that like well you can't for this because it's an open case but uh spoiler spoiler uh but if like you'd think that'd be like a pretty pretty like 
easy determined thing to figure out. That. Right. And I guess maybe, I guess you'll, maybe we'll come up with the reasons why later or something. But yeah, there's a lot of cases I've done where I just, I'm like, two sites say whatever, the 12th. Yeah. And then like five say the 11th. I'm like, I guess I'll go with 11th. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't really know what date, but I'm thinking it's probably October 12th that is when all this happened, just because of the way some things lay out. And this was in 2011 again. Uh, but Patty was to attend class at Euler that day. Her classes started at around nine or so. So at 830 that morning, uh, her mom said there was just beautiful sunlight pouring into the house. Patty was smiling, said goodbye to her mother, and she headed off to class, which is around a 20 minute drive um, to campus from their house. Um, so is she in Little Rock proper or do you know? I'm not sure. Um, but you know, 830 in the morning in Little Rock, that's, you can be yeah. five miles away and that's a 20 minute drive. Yeah. I guess it, might, it depends on which direction you're going. Yes. I guess. Yes. So I'm not really sure, but it was, I'm going to guess she probably didn't live that far away, but it's just a rough drive at 830 in the morning there. Um, but she also had a $500 check in her pocket that was for tuition and she paid for her tuition herself. She worked multiple jobs, um, which actually after she got out of class, um, Patty was supposed to go to work at, it said Metropolitan, which I'm going to assume is the bank, Metropolitan Bank, but I don't know that for sure. I don't know what else it would be. Yeah, me neither. But she was supposed to work there from one to six and then go babysit for some family members after that, that evening. So, I mean, she was a hard worker. She worked hard to pay for her own schooling, I mean, which is incredible at 20. I mean, that's awesome. So um, when she got to campus that morning, Patty parked her car across the street from Euler at kind of like behind this Burger King, which is not official UAL, UAL, um, UAL, I'm UA like, Little Rock, would that work? Euler. Because that's how they... Uh, they say Euler. We'll say Euler. Well, I was going to say their official branding these days is UA Little Rock. That's how they... Do I'm, the school. I'm going to say Euler. Okay. 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 So not official Euler parking, but a lot of students parked around there. Um, so her friend, Jabari Douglas, who was a fellow classmate, he had texted her early, kind of earlier in the morning to see if she was going to come to class, but he never received a response and she never showed up for her two classes, even though she made it to school. None of her friends heard from her that day at all. And then eventually her phone was not stopped working. Like calls couldn't go through, no voice messages, no texts, anything like that. She never made it to her shift at Metropolitan either. So when 7 p.m. came around, Lenore, again, that's Patty's mom, she knew something was really wrong because she and Patty spoke often, very often. And Patty would have called if she was going to be late or if something had happened. So um, like this is like literally technically she's only been missing for basically an hour because she was supposed to finish her shift and come home. And her mom already knew something was wrong. Like that's that is instinct very much so. And especially, you know. It's outside the norm of what she's doing Absolutely. with her life normally. And so you you know that that family is tight for her mom to know so quickly something's not right. Yeah, maybe I need to be tighter with people. So if on the in, on the off chance I go missing, like people will be like, hold up, he's missing before, you know, it's been two days or something. And I they're think, like, wait, I haven't heard for, from Andrew in a while. It's been a week. I think I'd notice. I think, I also think your family would probably notice. Ah, uh, Maybe. Uh, I think my mom would notice because I call my mom every day right after I get off work. Brag. I just. I what, love you love your mommy? I do love my mommy. That's sweet. <laughs> you, you, yeah, it is. <laughs> I do love my mom. Um, okay. So Lenore and her other daughter, Gloria, um, again, that's Patty's sister. They began calling friends and family to see if they had heard from or seen Patty, but nobody had heard from or seen her since that morning. So in desperation, the two women kind of began driving around just to try to spot Patty or her vehicle or anything else that had to do with Patty. Um, And it was cold and rainy that night. So their efforts, I mean, they were just struggling. So they ended up finding. um, So Lenore and Gloria found Patty's car where she had parked it that morning by the Burger King next to campus. And that was just in her usual parking area. So that was not unusual at all. But Patty was nowhere to be found. Like, she was not in the car. There was no evidence of anything else. 
Um, so fearing the worst, Lenore contacted police to report her daughter missing that evening. So maybe I'm thinking maybe the confusion might have been. I don't know. It could have been the 11th because it might have they might have reported her missing late that night. And so it was almost the 12th or something like that. Gotcha. So I just to make sure I've driven by Euler's campus a uh-huh, bit. Uh-huh. Um, and I assume this is the Burger King that's off um, University because it's it, University Avenue it runs like right by UALR. OK. And so if you're driving south, which is the direction I would drive if I was going there. On the right side, there's like strip mall and pizza, Burger King, all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. So I assume that's where it is. And it is Probably. like right across campus. Right. And, you know, I don't blame her because colleges are like, hey, give us all your money. Also, you have to pay $300 for parking. Well, especially UALR has like, it's tough parking because it is, it is very much a commuter school. Yes. It is in the largest city in Arkansas, the one true city of Arkansas. Woo-hoo. And i've i've been around that campus there's not that much parking available right so i'm sure yeah. it's astronomical you get and, it where you can get it yeah it reminds me of when i lived near uh the campus at arkansas state and i would drive to the subway across from campus and park there are you serious i did that a few times yeah no way you better believe it that was so far away yeah but it was a lot closer than walking from my apartment wow which, I mean, I did that a lot walking from my apartment, so it wasn't that bad. But there were some days where I was like, nah, <laughs> I'm parking at the subway. I get a little closer. All right. So they contacted, uh, Lenore contacted police, reported Patty missing. So police, they immediately kind of knew something was wrong as well based on um, Lenore and Gloria's stories. So they kind of immediately began searching for Patty. So continuing the search, investigators talked with local businesses in the immediate surrounding area to see if they had any kind of video surveillance that might give them a hint to Patty's whereabouts or if she had been in there, if anything had occurred. But unfortunately, they could not find any video surveillance to help them out. They did conclude that Patty had arrived to campus, but never made it to any of her classes, that she had Hmm. driven to campus and parked. But for whatever reason, she never made it to any of her classes. Uh, so they also processed her vehicle, but they never released if there was any evidence collected. And this will be kind of a theme that we'll get to. So the next day, uh, many people of the community through Euler, through different churches, through different organizations, so many people showed up to help search for Patty along with her family and friends. And in the following days, the search was very heavy to find missing Patty. So the worst part of the search was, just the total lack of evidence. There was nothing that could at least be like, hey, this party, go search this area because we suspect maybe there's something in that area. It was literally like she had vanished in broad daylight. There was not much to go off of at all. But investigators said it was likely that foul play was involved, which I guess makes sense. Typically, it probably is, I guess. Unless it's like... I don't know. Sometimes there's people who are mentally unwell or something. But there was no evidence of that for Patty. And or like really old people sometimes go missing. Wander off. I, I assume because they have like dementia or something. Which yeah, is yeah, really yeah. sad. Yeah. But I, one of her, it was the same classmate, Jabari Douglas. I read an article had said that he was hoping, you know, I hope that, hey, maybe she just needed a few days to herself. You know, she was, she was a hard worker and, you know, she took care of her family. She took care of herself. So maybe she just needed a little time. And so they were hopeful that maybe she just needed a little time, but they did not treat it as such. I will say that they were investigating very hard from the beginning. So four days later, after Patty went missing, four days after Patty went missing, some people were searching for a good fishing spot and came across a pond off Highway 65 in Pulaski County, which is Little Rock. Um, The one true county. (laughs) They were horrified, however, to discover a female body floating face down in the pond and it was determined that that body did it was patty so gloria and lenore remember receiving the call and just how absolutely devastating it was Uh, gloria said of her sister i just didn't want it to be her i was hoping it was just a mistake and that she was still out there alive which i feel like whenever you receive traumatic shocking news of any sort it's like your first instinct is no that's not right it's like denial and 
I can't imagine having to come to terms with that is my sister who was found face down in a pond and just dumped there like she's nothing. Uh, so Patty's body was quickly taken to the state crime lab. I'm sorry. It was quickly taken to the state crime lab. And they said it was clearly evident that it was homicide. However, no manner of death has ever been released. Meaning they said it was homicide, but the circumstances around it, was it strangulation? Was it drowning? Was it stabbing? Was it gunshots? Nothing has ever been determined. Nothing has ever been released about it. No, nothing, how she was found, if she was clothed, if it was a sexually motivated crime, nothing, none of that has ever been released. Nothing. And that is what is so frustrating. We're going to get to that some more. Well, I mean, I think you spoiled it earlier saying this is an open investigation. It is open. Sometimes they try and keep that stuff close to the vest for various reasons. Let's talk about this. Okay. So investigators tried to figure out if this was a random event or if this could have been caused by someone Patty knew. They had, they still haven't determined that. An ex-boyfriend of Patty's was questioned in connection with her disappearance, but it doesn't seem that anything came of that. I, I don't see... I saw that he was questioned and that's it. That's all I saw. It didn't say if he was ruled out. It didn't say if he, it didn't even give a name. So I don't know. And a lot of talk has gone around that someone knows something. Of course, someone knows something. Uh, But that the Hispanic community um, in the area is hesitant of coming to the police with information as they've been burned before as far as like immigration stuff. And so even though investigators have assured that their immigration status would not would not come into play or have anything to do with the case. They just want somebody to, to give information. I so mean, I can, I can see people still not I trusting because totally I, I bet it. there are times where they said, nah, it's not going to be a fine, problem. It's and fine. And then they ship them back to wherever they came from. Yeah. And I mean, same thing happens with like, um, uh, like drug cases sometimes where they're like, oh, if your if your friend's ODing, don't, you should call somebody and then we're not going to do anything. And then they do something and it's like I, I do want to set the record straight here when a nurse is getting your medical history if you do drugs please tell them we do not care at all it is not a factor the only factor is that some of the medications we give you can interact with some of the drugs you take we don't want to kill you we want you to get better please tell us if you're taking drugs we literally don't care we just want you to get well there are no repercussions for you taking drugs in our eyes there's that there's my spiel um so i yeah i totally get it that you know they wouldn't want to come forward i i mean they they can't chance something bad happening to them or their family you know so um anyway uh there is hardly any information out there about the evidence collected in this case they are holding most of the information uh in like kind of close as they have said this is an ongoing investigation. This is not technically a cold case, even though there hasn't been much activity on it because they're keeping it active and they're still re- they're still searching into it. So, like, when I say there's no information, there are no cell phone records. What happened? Did her cell phone ping? Were there any cell phone messages between people, you know, of interest or anything? No information on what the vot- motivation for the crime was. No no information if that $500 check was still in her pocket. You know, no, like I said, there was no, didn't mention how she was killed. Although they said it was homicide. They didn't say how she was killed. They didn't say if there was any sexual aspects to the case. Even her family knows hardly, they, they barely know anything. They know hardly nothing. Which is, I can't imagine how devastating that would be to say, yeah, your daughter was killed. Why? What happened? No, you, you don't get to know. I understand both sides. I get the police have to keep some things close because you need to make sure the information you're getting is legit. But give us something, you know, like w- give us something. Um, it is weird that it, the case has gone on this long and there's no information like that. So there's there like must nothing. Be this is 10 years. We're going, this year will be 10 years for this case. Hmm. I, w- I wonder why that is. I don't know. I w- there- you think they give a little bit at this point to be like, let's get this fire, you know, rekindled and get some information flowing. Cause just like with every unsolved case, somebody knows something. And th- like, I feel like, yeah, but sometimes the person who knows something is the murderer, and they're the only one who knows. I feel like, I don't know. I just feel like 
if this was a random thing, it's something they've done before or something similar to it. So they have accomplices. They have quote unquote friends that they're going to confide in. They may be terrible people like them, but somebody knows something, you know, like anyways, I think that's why probably, excuse me, Amanda Tussing's case is kind of lumped in with this a lot. When people talk about Patty, they were both young college students and they were both just, I mean, Amanda was just on her way back home late at night. I mean, different circumstances, but Patty was literally different, on different parts of the state. state yeah. yeah. But I mean, I don't think these are related cases, but it's just, they're talked about a lot together because it's both, they're both unsolved cases and they're both young, promising women who, I mean, one was headed back home with no apparent anything happening. And one was literally at school, basically. I mean, she was technically off campus, but it was practically on campus. Yeah, like and nobody saw anything. Like Caitlin here, who is unathletic, could probably throw a ball from that Burger King over onto what is technically UALR's campus. Yeah, I am not. I am not athletic. Let us let us put that out there. So I just can imagine uh, for family and for police alike that this case is incredibly frustrating and incredibly disappointing because I was reading uh, Gl- Gloria. I'm sorry, Lenore, Patty's mom. She doesn't speak English very well. And so she uses a trans, she was using a translator to speak to the news outlets. And like, it was so sad to hear her talk. She's like, I just want to know why. I just need to know why. What did she do to you? And it's like, she didn't, she didn't do anything. You know, somebody's just a terrible person. So it was, anyways, reading all that from Lenora was really, really sad. And hearing Gloria's side as well, her her sister saying, like, she was my role model. She was a role model to the rest of our siblings. You know, I needed her to help me through life. She was supposed to help guide me through life, and she's not here. And it's so sad to hear all that because she was, anyway. So, and that's it. That's the last information we have. Nobody has been named a public suspect. The only thing that seems to have changed in this case really is a sign that hangs near where Patty's car was found and it reads park at your own risk. And my that's about it. my dad used to go to lunch down in uh, that part of town. Oh yeah. And my mom would be like, "Hey, you need to be careful." And he'd, he'd be like, "That's ah, fine." And dad, then then like You heard it here. Well, one day he is driving and uh the traffic comes to a standstill as he sees like some guy go running across the street and then a bunch of cops are fall- running after him. Oh it's no. Like, it's like, oh, like, yeah, something like that. I, I should ask him that story again, but. Dad, be careful. Because he's a better storyteller than I am. <laughs> and also it's his story. He remembers it better than I do. You're probably right there. Yeah. So there have been, they said, hundreds of leads that have come and gone very quickly. Nothing's panned out. But this is an ongoing case. And if you have any information regarding Patty, please contact the Little Rock Police Department at 501-371-4660. And Andrew will post that in the show notes for us. Absolutely. And and that is uh, Patty Gordado, her case. All right. So. I had something I was going to say. Oh, uh, so I know you were listening to uh, Harry Potter, right? Oh, yeah, all the time. All the time. That's all you listen to. I l- I've listened to those audiobooks so many times. Well worth the investment. I was just going to mention that because um, I actually just remembered that the uh, theater that I saw the second Harry Potter movie was at The Village, which is a theater like right across the street from UALR. Or it was. I think they tore it down. Oh, really? Yeah. At some point, um, some point after I saw it. They ended up closing it as a movie theater. It only showed one movie. It was like a weird theater. Oh, it was a small, real small theater. Yeah, small, but it was like the screen was really, really long. So it was like you were almost wrapped around by the movie. It was really strange. Weird. Uh, at some point, they turned into like a venue for bands. Like oh. I saw some band okay. there. I don't cool. remember who it was, but hmm. I don't know. Just cool. thinking about Harry Potter since you, were, since you were listening to that. Harry Potter. Also, I just want to mention... I'm kind of proud of us. Um, if you go, if you follow us on Facebook or Instagram, you would have seen our post from this weekend. We are ranked in Iceland, which is 
the weirdest thing to say. And it's technically true. It's true. We are ranked 170 in Iceland. And I was like, well, heck, that's pretty cool. So, no, and, and it, their population is very similar to the size of Pulaski County, the one true county of Arkansas. So this is the one true country of the world. Yeah, I think that's that's good logic. They recognize <laughs> us for who we are. Great people. Thank you, Iceland. The whole country, oh, you that, made this possible. That reminds me of some guy. I can't think of his name now, but he was from Arkansas. And he was some sort of like performer. Bobby Bones. No, I don't remember his name. He had like a normal person name. Oh. And he was talking about how in Arkansas, you know, he can draw a small crowd at Vino's or something. Right. But when he was like in Australia, he's playing these way bigger venues and stuff, which is like really strange. It is strange, but I think that happens. I don't know. Just depends on what you appeal to. And apparently we are appealing to Iceland. Take me to your country, please. (laughs) I hear it's great. Um... All right. Hey, we're going to do a little bit because this is our first story of the new year. Happy 2021. We're going to do a little talksies about kind of our year in review of last year and what we're looking forward to this year and our goals. And we're going to get really, really emotional into this. Andrew shrugged. He doesn't care. I am. Let me try that. I am going to. Are we ready? You first. Oh, okay. Um, which part am I doing now? The like year in review? Yeah, let's do year in review. Oh, it was a year. Yeah, it was. I, I would think not say it was a great year. I would think. I think it's uh, pretty well known that nobody cared for this year. Yeah, I'm not sure I would have cared for it even without COVID. Who knows? Um, I think COVID made things literally a thousand times worse. I don't know. Maybe I'm just saying. Like I don't know if I would come out of this year and been like, "Yes, I did." This it. was a good year. Yeah. Like, like even if there was no COVID, I don't. I think I would have been like, "Hmm. Well, could have been better." <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get like maimed and killed or anything. I guess so. That's cool. That's like how I feel like I would have come out of that year without COVID. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. 2020. What a nightmare. What what a night. 2020. Okay, so I'm going to start with in January of last year, 2020, there was a lot of hype because through the nursing community because this was the year of the nurse. It was either Florence Nightingale's like, like 200th anniversary since her birthday or her death. I can't remember. You thought the year of the nurse <laughs> meant good things. Yeah. You didn't realize it means you're going to work way harder yeah. and have way more responsibilities and have to deal with a bunch of doofuses who <laughs> think that the thing that's happening isn't even real. You didn't realize that this would be the worst year of work ever and that people are dying all around you. For real. So I was like, I was curious just now. Yeah. How, um, how I knew we started the podcast technically before the pandemic. Yeah. Yes. So I went back and checked. The release date of the first episode March was 9th. March 10th. 10th. Okay. We recorded on the 9th. Which was one day. Which was. Before the NBA whole, the whole thing with Rudy Gobert, Gobert, however you say his name. But that whole thing and everything just shut down. Yes. One day before when yes. we started this podcast. Yes. It was a total. Yes. Yeah. So. January. Let's start it. Let's just go month by month because I literally took my life a day at a time in this past year. I'm glad you can remember what happened in January. I have no idea what happened last January. The only reason why I remember what happened in January is because that's when my divorce was finalized. Oh, cool. (laughs) Yeah. Which was, let's talk about that. That started the year off on, excuse my French, a real note. Cool. Thanks, Caitlin. Well, okay. We're just starting there. So this is only the beginning. This podcast is explicit now. Oh, I'm sorry. Unless I fix it. I don't know. Bleep it. Learn how to bleep it. I'll probably silence it. There you go. I can kind of do that. Perfect. That's the thing I sort of know how to do. Perfect. So January, that's when the divorce is finalized. I just don't do any more, by the way. Divorces? That too, but oh. any more of them swears. I'm so sorry. Because it'll sorry. make my life hard. I'm so sorry, everybody. I, it, but it was well warranted in this situation. And it was terrible. I, that was one of the lowest points of my life. This whole, that whole thing. But no, it was the lowest point of my life. Without a doubt. I wanted literally to die. Being dead would have been better than what I felt like. So, and... Somehow, no, this is not somehow. 
uh, therapy and antidepressants is how I came through. And your good friend, Andrew. And I don't know, maybe. Oh, okay. But I had some good work people. That's cool. And my family. We, I mean, you weren't, you weren't like hanging out around then. So I also kind of start like I went through like a hiatus from school between October and December of 19 going into 20 uh, and then picked back up in January. And I didn't think I was going to be able to do it, but I went back and I kicked butt. In February is when I talked to you about doing the podcast. I just had this like harebrained idea. And I was like, I love true crime. I want to do a true crime podcast. And so I approached you and then we planned it all. We talked about the first case, what we were going to do. And then we, we recorded the first episode like two or three times. Yeah, we did. So we did two practice episodes. The first one, we did it just off of your computer's built-in mic. Yes. Just as like a practice run of like how we were going to do things. It was not good. No. Uh, audio or content it wise. It was terrible. In fact, I think we barely did any research for that first version of it. Yeah. Uh, it was us making a lot of assumptions. Then we recorded a second version <laughs> where we were like, we've got microphones and we're going to see how that works and make sure all that is going to do a thing. That's when we actually did research. And we and, researched. Yeah. And we were like, oh, wow, this is super different than what we thought. This is way better. <laughs> and then we finally released that first one, which was uh, probably terrible. I haven't listened back to it. I'm scared too. Yeah, me too. But honestly, it's very interesting. Ronald Gene Simmons, case number one. It was very... Which I guess we didn't record until March, but yeah. Yeah, but we, we started planning and everything. We started February. ordering microphones, I assume, in February yes. for them to have come in in time for all that. Yes. Um, another thing from February... The Chiefs won the Super Bowl, and that was a real bummer because I hate them. My Alyssa and her family love the Chiefs. Yeah, well, tell her to suck it because I've seen my <laughs> team win three Super Bowls. Congratulations. I'm really happy Versus for you. the one that the Chiefs have won in Good their lifetime. I, I rather, I'd rather support an underdog, Andrew. Mm. It's not like the Broncos are like, I don't know. Incredible. Well, yeah. they've won Especially three, not right now. so... Mm. Yeah, well, they had the help of football god, John Elway, to carry them on Who's, his back. I don't know who it is. He is a football god. <laughs> okay. Is he a football player or a coach? <laughs> he used to be a player. He's now coaching. he's uh, like an executive with the Broncos. Yeah. He's the, he looks like a horse, kind of. Oh. Which is fitting, because he, play, he played for the Broncos. Oh, my God. It's so perfect. Yeah. Look at that. That's why he is a football god. He's going to be. So in March, like you said, that's when we recorded our first episode. And things were kind of like, like COVID was kind of like becoming more of a thing. And we're like, what's going to happen? And then the day after everything was like, we're done. The whole world's shutting down. And I was like, well, dang, because guess what? My 30th birthday was March 20th. And you want to know what I did for my 30th birthday? This is me throwing a pity party because I didn't have a real party. I hey, needed to die. I worked. I came home, I sat on the couch, I ate dinner by myself with my dogs, and I cried. And that was my third, and I went to bed by 10. That all sounded good until you cried. It was a terrible birthday. It was the worst birthday, because this was like a really big deal to me, and it was terrible. And you had all the other stuff stacked on top, and... Yeah, and the year started terrible, and then I was excited about the podcast, and then every and then the world shut down, and then everything shut down. You know, it was really funny. We were my fr- my friends and I were like, "Oh, well, when this passes, we'll we'll have a we'll have a nice gathering stuff." And it's like it's literally a year later. <laughs> we're we're at the worst part ever. Yeah, I mean, there was a good while where even the most cynical people were like, "Well, this is going to happen for like two or three weeks, maybe a month." Yeah, and um, we're we'll pull through it. Yeah, now it's uh, we it's, are not pulling through it. It started in March. We're in January now, so... And it's still... Yeah. It's still going. Hey, wear a mask. Be safe out there. Yes. The hospitals are overrun. You dinguses. Yes. Uh, yes. Very true. So April is like when things started to change at my job. We, we went to teams instead of working as a full team. It was very difficult. Very, very difficult for a while. I also started to get really into my yard at this time, and I bought a bunch of equipment, and I had a dang good looking yard. Caitlin turned into your dad. I did. I sure did. And you know what? I was, I, I am so proud of how my, I have never seen a man make a yard look so good. So you all can take that to the bank and suck on it. So the yard's not that big. It's not a big deal. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it matters the quality, not, not the. That's not, not what I've heard. <laughs> um, so May was pretty much the same. June is when John and I met and we went on our first date and it was 
it was a little weird. The first date was kind of weird because we're like, how do we, how do you date and socially distance and be safe? So we ended up getting. the answer is you don't, right? Well, we ended up getting a meal to go and we went to a park and sat at a park and ate. And y'all sat six feet apart well, on different just, benches. It wasn't six feet apart, but it was fine. And it, it, it ended up being fine. So that was a wonderful highlight and really changed the course of where I thought that year was going to go. So July, much of the same. August, we finally came back to work together as a full team, and I was just absolutely ecstatic. And we kind of, because that was just like one step closer to normalcy. Uh, little did I know. Jokes on you. Jokes on me. Uh, my dad celebrated his 62nd birthday. Happy birthday, dad. And I was able to visit with him, which was nice. And then in September, mom turned 62, and I was able to visit with her. Mm-hmm. And th- that was a chair. And Jackson, my cat, started to get sick. And it's only been a downward spiral since then. My poor kitty. Um, October, Corona started picking up again really hard following school and dumb people. Um, um, I'm a big fan of this year's, this past year's October because really? it's the first time where I wasn't invited to like a, go do a Halloween thing and a Halloween party. And there was a good reason other than my unlikability. Why? Because oh, the pandemic. <laughs> oh. Well, hell, you're getting invited to parties and I'm not for October, so. The joke was I was not. Oh. And I never am. Oh. So the joke is. I didn't get the joke. I didn't I didn't get invited this year like I don't every year, but this year there was a reason other than I have no friends. I see what happened. Yeah. Cheers. So November uh, was hard because, you know, we had to make the decision not to celebrate Thanksgiving with family. And that was difficult, but we did it. So we can come together this year, hopefully. And my grandmother passed away two days before Thanksgiving. That was really, really difficult. And your your grandmother passed. My grandmother passed, also passed away. Yeah. Um, last year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you did that one episode without me. I did, yeah. Because that was, happened like right around that. It was the Morgan Nick episode. It was. Uh, my my dad, I think he, uh, he didn't know that I hadn't done that episode. Like I... He didn't know, like he saw the episode come up in his feed and he's like, I don't know if I can go through that one because it's so sad because he yeah. knew, knows all about it. Yes, it's a like, tough he, one. He even knew about the, like, whatever it was, like the farm or something that they went to dig up where they thought yes. she was going to be. Yes, Like he knew all that stuff. And I was like, well, good news, dad. I'm not on it. So don't even worry about it. <laughs> it was a tough one. That one, yeah, that's a, that's a, yeah, doozy of a one. So, um, yeah, COVID... Uh, my sister got COVID. My grandmother passed away from it. So um, it's been a really hard. It was a hard beginning of the year. This whole year has been hard. It was. It was I was say it was a hard beginning and hard end. But the middle was difficult too with the team stuff. Now I was about to say like the beginning was fine, not at for least me. for me. Not for me. But not for you. So it was just like out. Of, what's, what's the saying? Out of the frying pan into the stove into the oven or something. Fry, out of the oven into the frying pan. Something I, like I that. I know what you're talking about. Yes. Out of, yeah, out of the oven into the frying pan. I don't know. I know. I know There's a Star Fox 64 uh, level called that, I think. So, you know. Um, and then uh, December, again, had to make the tough decision not to come together with family. And my kitty's been super sick. He seems, I don't want to jinx it, but he seems to be a little bit better. But like the vet was he talking is, to me he about. He's pretty old. He'll be 14 this year. But the vet was literally talking to me about like end of life. Like, and I was like. No. <laughs> when you no. say it that way, it makes it sound like you're talking about like sorting out his will or something. Well, I mean, I have to decide. Basically, it's to the point where he will probably not be get back to 100%. And so when when is his time? And that is a really hard thing to think about. Yeah. Like having to kill one of your animals. How to compassionately kill one of Don't your animals. Don't ask Dwight. <laughs> yeah. He did a bad job. Yeah. Garbage. I got garbage because I found him in the garbage. <laughs> What uh, was the name also, of the-, the Office is off Netflix now. Yeah. And that's sad. So 2020 was fun because we got to watch The Office while we were all sitting around doing nothing. That is true. Is there... So I guess we've hit December on yeah. your list there. So now we're in January. It's starting better than last year. Uh, it's, yeah. Well, it's in some aspects, but in some aspects it works. I mean, absolutely overflowing with patience. It's just absolute insanity. Uh, but I hope that there is more hope on the horizon with the vaccine. Uh, I get my second dose this week. So fun. Hopefully yeah. people will actually take the vaccine and also not try and intentionally spoil it like that uh, pharmacist Far- did. Terrible person. Terrible yeah. person. 
America's dead. It's fine. Well, I will say I'm really proud of our hospital and our community because we had I th- like 970 something, I think five vaccines, which is quite a bit for the size hospital we are. Uh, we have about 1500 employees total. Um, so, and all of the vaccines are gone. So we, we distributed all the vaccines, which is really awesome. We did uh, all of our frontline staff were offered the vaccine first, and then all non-frontline staff were offered the vaccine, and then uh, first responders that work in conjunction with our facility, like paramedics, uh, things like that, uh, EMTs. So, and then policemen, firefighters, so other first responders. So um, really, really awesome stuff there. I'm really looking forward to the next round of vaccines. So uh, at-risk people of the community can start getting vaccine, older populations and those with uh, comorbidities. Yeah, hopefully um, as a country, we will learn from this, but I have no faith that that'll happen. Yeah, it's... I feel like it's just going to be a continual downward spiral until the whole thing turns into a smoldering crater, but that's just me. Maybe I'm overly cynical. Sometimes I am. So don't freak out when I say things like that. I did hear, it kind of made me a little upset. I did hear, uh, I was walking down the hallway and I heard uh, some, I don't know these people, they're employees of the hospital. I I don't know who they are. But one person said to the other, hey, did you get the vaccine? And they said, yeah, right. And that really made me cringe really hard. And let me say, the only reaction so far that I have had from the vaccine is totally a local reaction. The same reaction I had to the the Tdap or Dtap, whatever it is, tetanus d- diphtheria pertussis vaccine. It's a booster vaccine you have to get every ten years. Um, it's the same reaction I had to that, so I'm not worried about it. Yeah, I everything about these anti vaxxer doofuses just ticks me off. Me too. I wish they would just, you know, run to the edge of the earth and fall off of it since they think the earth is flat typically. (laughs) Like that's the same kind of person. Yeah. And the reason they don't want us to know the earth is flat is because of reasons. Don't tell anybody. It's, it's it's ridiculous. I don't, I don't know. Um, trying to think. Okay. What are you looking forward to most about this year? Goals? What are you looking forward to? Anything like that? Oh, I don't know. I, I'm planning on reading more books. Oh, good. Hey, you have some books on the list you need to read. <laughs> I do. I've got like I've got a big list of books. Like I put on the li- like on the list. I'm yeah, get, yeah. I'm, I've I've put in parentheses. This, this is covered in this book yeah. here. I'm looking forward to one particular book. I won't spoil what case it is, but it's about that lady. Oh, I thought you were gonna say Star Wars: High Republic, The Light of the Jedi, which literally comes out the day this episode comes out. Oh my god. Which is pretty cool. I don't know if I'll read it right away, but you know. Yeah. I don't know. Like. <sighs> hey, I think we're reading is Ho- awesome. What a great, great goal. Yeah. Hopefully this vaccination stuff works out. Hopefully what I'm looking forward to, and I'm not convinced it'll happen, is a return to some form of normalcy. Me too. Both politically, we're not going to touch it. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> but also just like. Being able to go to a place and do a thing. I know. And not worry about like, am I masked up? Is it okay? Is this restaurant, it's at half capacity. Will there be enough room for us? I mean, I, yeah, I agree. I'm ready. I'm, I think we're all ready for normalcy. But uh, I, I guess, I know it's not anybody's fault, but these vaccines have got to roll out faster. Like It is some people's fault. Don't worry about it. Yeah, but you know what I mean. Um it's not our fault. No. It's not good people's fault. It's uh, other people's fault. So, uh, I think this year, when we're looking to normalcy, this year is the year that I am taking my freaking Scotland trip. We'll see about that. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but, you know, come hell or high water, wh- because I have tickets to go see Elton John, and I was supposed to go last year, and I planned for it the year before that. So, this trip is like two and a half years in the making, because it's not till December of this of 2021. So I have tickets to see Elton John. He's on my bucket list. I'm going to Scotland to see him with my mom. And I think that's going to be a good end of the year. I'm hopeful by this time next, you know, December 2021 that, you know, we have some immunity going on and things are starting to return to normal. I'm hopeful before that, but definitely. Yeah, by I, then. 
I am hopeful, but not expecting because right. I have I have seen what America is now, and it is bad. Agreed. So, yeah. hooray for us. Um, you know what made me proud? What? My grandfather, who, you know, we may not agree on some, some views, but my grandfather thinks Trump's an idiot, and he is uh he really wants his vaccine i was like pop i'm proud of you good job pop so we notoriously don't agree on a lot of things but on some fundamental things we can agree on <laughs> that's good yeah i just uh god i don't know um i want to have a better attitude this year sure i think dealing with a lot of depression last year uh made me have a really bad attitude towards a lot of things so I really want to try to work on that this year. It's up and down for me. Sometimes I'm I'm like, I'm feeling optimistic. And then it's like, you know, then you hear about a phone call and you're just, you lose all optimism. <laughs> and you're just like, yep. The world is nothing. We are nothing. Well, it's just like, yep. America's going down the toilet real hard, isn't it? That's yeah. real good. Anyway. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't have anything else for like looking forward to in the year, honestly. Like I I don't feel comfortable looking forward to anything right now. No, it's because, hard it's hard to feel optimistic. Because I don't I'm not convinced that any of it will happen. Yeah. Is that James Bond movie gonna come out? Who knows? I, hope I don't it know. Does. I hope it Someday does. Someday it will. It was supposed to come out last year. Was it really? Yeah, and they delayed it because there were nobody in th- there's nobody in theaters. And they but never hey, worked out the finances for streaming it, I, I guess. I say Wonder Woman eighty four made a great profit. Did it? I made a good profit, yeah. The first weekend. Oh, I haven't looked. I, it seemed like a lot of people don't like that movie. I liked it. It was very. It was kind of cheesy, but I still liked it. Yeah, I, I still haven't seen it. I did watch Soul. <gasps> I um, loved it so much. I'm a little disappointed in the ending. I'm not going to say anything more. I don't want to spoil anything. Hmm. Also, does not seem like a good kids movie. I know there's some wackiness in parts, like with the cat and all that, but I don't know. I don't know if I, I don't, if I were a kid, I don't know if I would have cared for that movie. I think it's definitely geared towards a higher audience. It's definitely a very deep, very, very deep movie. Um, like, I think I, I was saying how my friend, he and his kids watched that movie. And his youngest kid, who's like three or four, was like, yeah, cool. But his older, his older son, who's like seven or so, he had a lot of questions. Really? That's yeah. interesting. I was just wondering, because like, I mean, I'm never around kids, so I don't know what they think about. I don't yeah. know how smart or dumb they are. Um, <laughs> it depends on the kid, really. I mean, that's part of it. But like, <laughs> I, I feel like sometimes we underestimate how smart kids are, but then also sometimes we overestimate how smart kids are. So I don't know. Uh, it's just it's a movie where I watched it and I was like, like, there's not a lot of like goofy wackiness happening. No, there's, there's not. not a lot of action happening. No, it's very. It's a very, it's a very mellow very movie. Chill in that way, yeah. But honestly, that goes really with a lot of who. Um, what was his name? Mr. Garner. Joe? Joe, yeah. That's a lot of who Joe is. Joe's a, a blues guy. He's a jazz guy. He's laid back. He's, you know, he's he's a chill guy with, you know, just living his life. So I think, you know, that kind of goes with his vibe. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. What what else? Uh, let me think. Technically happened last year at the very end. The, uh, the Brody Lee tribute show. Oh, boy. From AEW. Oh, no. Which was super sad yeah. and super good, though. Uh, I'll, I'll try not to dwell too much on it because it's wrestling. I know most people probably don't care about wrestling. I don't know. Sometimes people <laughs> sometimes people like hearing a person passionately talk about a thing they have no idea about. Yeah, maybe. I, like I do sometimes. I'm like, I don't know anything about this, but this person, they're talking about it passionately. And I'm enjoying hearing what they're having to say. But I'll, I'll just breeze through. I'll just talk about specifically one match that they had. It was John Silver, Alex Reynolds, and Hangman Adam Page against the Inner Circle, which was uh, Santana Ortiz and MJF. First of all, MJF is the best person ever at being a horrible prick. Why? So he comes out for this match, and he's just being a jerk. And Brody Lee's kid, Brody Lee Jr., is out there. He's wearing a Dark Order mask, which is the group that Brody was, Lee was a part yeah, of. Yeah, he was a part of. And uh, MJF is just like talking mess to that kid. But he knows it's coming. It's all planned. Yeah, exactly. But it is like, that's why I'm saying he's the best at being the worst. Oh, okay. He's like, he does his job of being a bad guy in wrestling 
better than anybody. Hmm. And there's a part in the match where MJF goes out, he t- rips the mask off <gasps> the kid's no! face and like spits on it and throws it down. And then he turns back around, the kid, uh, Bradley Jr., hits him over the head with the kendo stick as hard as he could. And it's like an eight-year-old kid, who cares? And it's just like, yes, that's, so, that's such perfect pro wrestling. At the end of the day, there's a bad guy. He comes out, he does bad things, and you go, wow, I hate that guy. I hope somebody beats him up. Guess what happened? He did a bad thing, and he was punished for it. Was, Unlike our American political system. Anyway. Um, was Brody Lee, like, was this guy the the villain against Brody Lee? Not really. Oh, okay. He's just he's just a prick. He's just a Char- villain. His character in general yeah, yeah, is yeah. a horrible, bad person. Yeah. Um, that match, though, was really good. Uh, John Silver, who is like... I swear he must be like 5'7". I don't know. He's not very he little, tall. He little guy. But he is yoked. Oh. Um, he, so he had gear that was like the exact same as Brody Lee's, Aww. which they had actually like, we're going to use for a different thing. And he ends up getting the win in the match. And it was so sad because he, at the beginning of the match, before, well, even before the match, like he came out later than the other two guys on his team. Because he, he was, he could not compose himself. Aww. Like in real life. Yes. Oh. And he gets out there and he's able to compose himself through the match and do all the stuff. And then he hits the finisher. Referee counts one, two, three. He breaks completely. Oh, that's like so he, sick. he completely loses. So that it. was one of his good friends in real life. Yeah. Aww. Like both like on TV and in real life. And it was super sad. And then uh Did they ever say what happened? Did no. you ever see anything? No. Um, then a guy named Eric Rowan, who was a tag team partner with Brody Lee for years, uh-huh. comes out. He oh, had boy. interfered in the match to help out. Uh-huh. He comes out and he's also like, he starts crying and John Silver's right beside him. And, and then he's er- boohooing. Yeah. And Eric Rowan is like gigantic. Uh-huh. He's like a big bald guy with a big giant red beard. Ooh. And he's like six, eight probably. Ooh. And John Silver's right beside him. Just like. Just five, losing seven, it, dude. and Eric Rowan's losing it, and he just takes his big old beefy arm and wraps him up like, "Come here, little buddy!" Like, it's, oh, it's so sad. Oh, I wonder nothing, how nothing, is, how is this kid? Did it show his kid? Uh, just a little bit, but not really. Mm. But yeah, like, of course, I'm I'm just like ah, because it's, <laughs> it's big beefy boys crying. It's it's my it's weakness. Sad. Yeah, <laughs> it's your weakness. <laughs> it is like if uh, big beefy boys are crying, then I'm just like. Oh no, what's wrong? So if my dad cries, you'd be upset. I'd be like, oh God, what's happened? <laughs> yeah. The worst thing ever has happened. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's funny. Oh, it's not. It's not funny. But you know what I'm, you know what <laughs> Yeah. I mean. But that was, overall, the whole show was really good and touching and good sweet. Tri- good tribute show. Made me very sad. Poor guy. But that's so sad. Family. He was obviously very well loved in his, in his job and his community. Oh yeah. Like, so WWE has a show that airs counter to AEW. So uh-huh. there's like two wrestling shows that air at the same time. Uh-huh. And even the WWE, like all of their wrestlers are like, we're going to be watching AEW tonight. Oh, yeah. And, and tribute for them. Yeah. That's really sweet. Well, um, in, in par with how crappy, it's just so much loss in 2020. I feel like it does feel like that. Um, I mean, granted over 350,000 people have died of COVID in the U S alone. So yeah. Yeah. But there is like other stuff. Yeah, a lot of other stuff, a lot of loss. Um, I guess I hope that this year for everyone, you know, it's it's still, you know, I'm I could be kind of a cynical person because I'm like, yeah, great, it's a new year. It's literally just the next day from the past year, and it's just going to keep rolling. Right. It's just an arbitrary day we picked on which the Earth has rotated or revolved, whichever the word is correct. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like, I mean. But at the same time, I think it's the idea of a fresh start, like all the bad things haven't happened yet this year, you know? I mean, they have, but and it's only the fourth, but... <laughs> yep. You know... Feels it, good. It's a fresh... Feels st- good to be an American right now. It's a fresh start, and I'm I'm hopeful that this year can be better for a lot of people. Absolutely. It's... it's I mean, honestly, I... As cynical as I'm being, I've been blessed to be able to get through this past year relatively unscathed, Yeah, to be honest, because I know so many more people are having it so much worse in so many different ways. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I am blessed in that way that that has happened, that I have been okay through this. 
It's just, we still got a ways to go, it feels like. But I guess, you know what? We're getting there. Yeah. We are getting there. Quit Progress it. is happening. Quit it. You're making me cry. Am I making you cry? You're Progress cry. is, ha- good things are happening, Caitlin. Do you want me to talk about the wrestling again? Will no. That, will that no. remove your emotions? That was bad. That was a different wrestling thing. Big beefy guys. Big beefy guys. Oh, man. No. Also, the one with... Uh, I, I won't talk about because I, I borderline was tearing up. Because I've been thinking about this tribute show. Like, yeah, since... Yeah. Since it happened, which was last Wednesday. Yeah. And that scene with seeing Rowan... Big, his, his big, big old arm because he's he's this giant guy. And he just grabs his friend. And and he's like, it's okay, tie. buddy. Aww. He's like, it's okay, buddy. And I'm just like, oh, God. And it's, re- and it's like real. Just, it's not fake. It's real. It is the realest. Wrestling is the truest form of art. It's a joke mm-hmm. I say, but this was... This was true. true wrestling feelings. exists in a hyper reality. Yeah. Where like they are characters, they are actors, but it is at the end of the day them more than it is in like a movie. I guess so. In yeah. a way. Yeah. So like, yeah, it's it's very strange, but... uh Yeah. But yeah, just thinking about... I would think about that scene and I would just tear up <laughs> just thinking about it. Because I was like, part of it was like, I was thinking like what I was going to talk about on the podcast. And I was like, I know I'm going to talk about this. And sometimes I, I think about what I'm going to say. Mm. And I just remember thinking like, am I going to make it through? I was like, <laughs> he just gets his arm. And I was like, oh, no, <laughs> no, 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 my no. emotions. No, 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 no. Um, I will say therapy. I mean, I, I harp on this, but I, like, seriously, I, I'm I'm not joking when I say Last year in, you know, the ending of 2019, I I did not want to be alive. Like, and I've said that before, but I I didn't want to be alive. And I can't believe, honestly, that I still am. I didn't know how I was going to make it. And as crappy, you know, you think of it as, you know, literally... I don't want to compare my life to Frodo, but I mean... That fictional character you don't want to compare yourself to? Yes. Are you afraid you're going to offend people if you do that? Well, I mean, I am not. I am no hero or heroine of any kind, but like, you just think of like the trudges, the absolute worst that Frodo and Sam went through to get to their goal. And it almost feels like that. It feels like a battle. It feels like a trudge to get... It felt... Especially in my dark times, it felt like a trudge to get through to the next day and the next moment, the next minute. But I can't believe that I am where I am. Oh, and I graduated in December with my bachelor's, which was over a decade in the making. <laughs> and can't I, believe somebody would take that long to graduate. Don't yeah. worry about it. Nobody <laughs> asks questions. And I, I just, you know, not that that's a thing, but I did it. I finished it on time going through the worst year of my life. You just said it took a decade, so I'm going to question you on the uh, on time aspect of when it. When I restarted <laughs> my when I restarted my journey, okay. When I re, especially when I started my bachelor's again in 2018, then and I knew I would be like my it, my graduation date was December 2020, and I I made it, and I I didn't think I was going to. Heck, I didn't. I br- I talked trash to you all the time, and that's what motivated you. Was is it because? Every great person, every great rapper, every great athlete, they always need a hater. They need haters out there saying, you can't do it. And then in spite, you do it. Actually, you already had somebody for that. Never mind. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> but you know what? It happened. It. I did it. I did it. And, you know, as crappy as it was, there are, don't forget, you know, this is what's going to, oh my God, I'm about to bring it full circle. Are you ready? Here we go. Absolutely. It's like soul. It's like Joe Garner in the moments I don't want to ruin it but he he gets to see how special the little moments in life are and how how that's what makes that's what makes up life a a leaf a beautiful leaf sun shining through the fall leaves and a beautiful leaf just falling to the ground and how absolutely perfect that moment is and don't forget to savor those don't and like those the big moments and the little ones like watching my niece and nephew just run around the yard in the sprinkler it's a beautiful moment <laughs> and oh my god caitlin's emotions <laughs> i am this has been such an emotional it, year yeah it is um uh, i think we all need to remind ourselves sometimes to to savor those moments and yeah. also to understand that a lot of times those dark moments aren't yeah. forever you, oh my God! It's, you just said the best thing. Uh, oh, did I? Yeah. Uh, Do you have something for this? I, I, 
this is you one, know what um this is one of my favorite 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 quotes of all time and it is and i remember posting this not long after my ex-husband left me and it was happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn on the light i was dumbledore baby <laughs> And it's so true. And when my friends, my one of my good friends, her father passed away from COVID. And I, I just told her, I was like, I don't know what to say, you know, in this time. Like, it's, it's how do you comfort somebody who just lost their dad? And I just said, I love you and I'm here for you. And just remember the words of Albus Dumbledore and that happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one can only remember to turn on the light. Remember those moments and hold on to them to get through the next dark moment just you have those moments those glimmers of light don't let go of them <sighs> oh my gosh <laughs> you okay this is a therapy podcast now I, I was worried i was gonna start tearing up when i was talking about that brody lee <laughs> thing because I, I i honestly again i when i just think about it it would make me tear up and i was like oh no <laughs> i'm never gonna make it through <laughs> how is it gonna happen when i have to say the words out loud <laughs> I, I thought about it enough. I'm good. Okay. Good. And I made it through. Honestly, this podcast with you the past year has been one of those glimmers of light. It really has. It, cause it was, it's been the consistent thing through the inconsistencies. And if nothing else, it's an excuse to talk to one of my best friends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you quit it. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's something where it's just like, you know, even, that's why I like the after part of the show yeah it's just like, just talk, it's two friends it, it's it's basically just us talking about whatever is yeah. on our minds to some extent yeah and i can just like also put out my thoughts about random Star movies Wars, and wrestling. stuff I, I you know what i'm starting to think like so i've so with my my thing with reading i've i've started like i, I wait this wait new year's eve wait what you've never read the harry potter books have you i haven't i have it on my kindle please read them so i can do that okay start you start the year off with that, okay. Andrew Ferguson. My plan is, so the library lets you have audiobooks and also regular books. My plan is, when I'm doing stuff, I'll listen to an audiobook. When I have time, free That's time I mean. regularly, I'm going to be reading a regular book. Perfect. With my eyes. With, in your brain? But I really, I beefed it the first time. Why? <laughs> because I was, I wanted to uh, get the audiobook of the Star Wars book called Heir to the Empire. So, you know, in... Uh, the Ahsoka episode of The Mandalorian, mm-hmm. she name drops Grand Admiral Thrawn. Yes. And I know who Thrawn is. I still haven't seen him in Rebels. I haven't gone that far. And, but I I know vaguely who he is. I've re- It's one of those things where I've, like, I've looked at the Wikipedia of it. Mm-hmm. Like, I know what Thrawn's all about. It's called Wikipedia. That's, That's not my fault. That's amazing. And so I was like, I'm going to look up the old stuff. It doesn't technically count anymore. The series, the Thrawn trilogy mm-hmm. from, like, the early to mid-90s. I was like, I'm going to, I just want to see everything because there's like those three books and then there's four books that do count now. And so I, I go in onto the library app and I'm like, heir to the empire. Cool. Click it. And then I look at it. I start listening. And I see like two and a half hours. That's very short for an audio book. This it can't is. be right. It wasn't right. What was it? It was basically a podcast of a behind the scenes thing where Timothy Zahn and some other people talk about the book. It is oh, not the book. So no, that was thank like, thank you. It's like, ah, oh, I really, what really a disappointment, man. Technically, I think that happened last year. I think that was December 31st. That's when I renewed my library card. <laughs> That's why you texted me about library stuff. Yeah. Uh, Cause I was all, I was, I was all hopped up. With, you were ready for book public, excitement. Yeah. And so I think it's like, I've got the, the actual thing on hold now. Nice. <laughs> I think it says it's going to be like two weeks. We'll see. Um, Who else is reading that? What a weirdo. A bunch of nerds. I mean, there's only one copy nerds. and his name got dropped in Mandalorian. So people are, people are going to want to know. It's true. So, uh, what, what else was it? Oh, so I'm listening to an audio book that is Star Wars called Queen's Shadow. Oh yeah. It doesn't seem very good so far. <laughs> but um there's some weird Star Wars lore stuff in it and I kind of want to save up all of that knowledge and have that be like a recurring segment sometime where I just go like here's a weird thing from Star Wars that you didn't know, you didn't want to know and it's really dumb and bad. But here you go. Yes. I would For I- instance, Shadows of the Empire has Prince Shizor who's a lizard man that emits pheromones 
so he can seduce regular earth ladies. Okay. Yep. You know a big old nerd made that guy up. So I don't Yeah. For real. That's, it's just wild. That is wild. But anyway, uh, okay. What else you got? Um, nothing important. Oh, you know what? Real quick. One thing that's important. What? Do we have time? How much uh, time we got? Yeah. We got time. We got a little bit of time. So I finished the story of Star Wars Squadrons, yeah. which is the video game. I won't say too much, um, except there is a part where I was about to be pissed because uh, you switch back and forth be- between playing as the New Republic and the Empire. So good guys, bad guys. You switch yeah. back and forth. And there's a part where you're playing as the imp- the Empire and you're attacking the ship. And on this ship is a character named Harris and Dula, who is actually from the cartoon show Rebels. And the mission is blow up that ship. And I was about to be pissed. I was like, you better not make me kill Hera. She's one of the best characters on Rebels. <laughs> she made it through this whole stupid galactic civil war. She cannot die now. Fortunately, spoilers, she doesn't. So I was happy about that. Congrats. I'm really happy for you. <laughs> I was just like, they better not make me kill this person. She is, Harris and Dula is one of my favorites. I'm not going to, if, if, she, if she dies, I'm done. I'm quitting. I'm, I'm uninstalling this game. Done. I'm throwing the PlayStation 4 out the window. No, I wouldn't do that. No, don't do that. Um, I don't, I watched um, Wrestle Kingdom is happening, which is New Japan's WrestleMania. I'll just go real quick. Uh, night one, it was good. Ibushi won. I was excited. Night two, hasn't happened yet. It's going to happen like at 2 a.m. or something. <laughs> but I'll watch it on delay probably. Maybe. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, yeah, that's about... Oh, Just Cause 4 is the best video game ever made. You haven't played that quite a bit. I saw, I, I I saw you, you blow up the guy. I you sent him video. spiraling across the world. Yeah, so if anybody's ever played Skyrim and you've seen a giant yeah. slam the club onto the like, saber tooth and it goes flying into the orbit, you can just do that all the time and just cause four on purpose. You shoot little rocket packs at people, activate it, launches them into the sky, <laughs> and it's was, amazing. It was really funny. It looks like a bug video, but it is working as intended. That is, it's really funny. That was funny. Yeah. So, um, that's a, I think that's all I've got. All right. I, I hope this is a better year for everybody. Me too. Um yeah why don't you take us out i guess if you don't have anything else no i think i've i've cried enough tears uh guys thank you so much for listening to us and sticking with us all last year and coming into us this year we're we're so happy to have you and we're so very very grateful for you you can catch us on facebook paint the town dead you can catch us on instagram paint the town dead all one word you can catch us on twitter pttd pod and you can also email us at pttd pod at gmail.com please feel free to subscribe like, rate five stars, share, comment, any interaction you have with us on our social medias or our streaming services. It's going to help us out a lot. And we appreciate it. With streaming services, you can catch us on pretty much everything, including YouTube. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's no video on the YouTube. It no, is it's just, just audio. It is just audio. We it's don't just, have a cool setup to do a thing. But No, yeah. no, no. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. Um, so I got a text message just now. Okay. Uh, it says... Um, F women for hours with this popular free magic pill. Get rock hard for hours and grow big. So, you know, new year. Hopeful for 2020. And my my thing that I want to leave you with is, and again, another quote by the great Albus Dumbledore. Let this be your mantra for this year. It says, let us step into the night and pursue that flighty temptress adventure. <laughs>